In this warm-up, we are figuring out how many fourths or halves are in something else. If you have forgotten how to change a mixed number to an improper fraction, I use this strategy where I multiply the whole number and the base. So 3 times 2 is 6. And then I add the top 6 plus 1 is 7. So this is 7 over 2. And then you have dividing by fractions, so you can change it to multiplication by using the flipped over version or the reciprocal, and then just complete the multiplication. Make sure you complete your warm up in your composition book. Here we have a question that says a quantity and its quarter added become 15. What is the quantity? This question was originally found in this piece of papyrus. An Egyptian began with the number four as his first guess. So if we added four and its quarter, which a quarter of four is one, we would get five which isn't 15, but it's a way that we could start to approach this problem. Sometimes a wrong answer is just as helpful in solving it for the correct answer. So I notice that 5 is a third of the way to 15, right? 5, 10, 15. So I'm going to triple the number 4 and see if that works. 4 times 3 is 12. So that is the quantity and its quarter. A quarter of 12, if we split 12 into four parts, is 3, which adds up to 15. So the quantity is 12. But sometimes starting with a guess helps lead us to something that is correct. Here it says Sean and his family are on a trip, a road trip. They drive at an average speed of 70 miles per hour on the highway. Use the double number line to show how many miles Sean's family drives during times ranging from 0 to 10 hours. For the miles, it says they go 70 miles per hour. So if we count by 70s, we will end up using that same ratio all the way through the tape or the double number line, excuse me. Part A asks us how far they will go in eight and a half hours. That's in between eight and nine hours. So we could figure out, well, what's in between 560 and 630? It might be helpful to think about how far they would go in a half of an hour. In one hour, they go 70 miles. So in half of an hour, well, half of 70 is 35. So 560 plus 35 will tell us how far they go in eight and a half hours, which is 595 miles. How far do they go in 30 minutes? Well, 30 minutes is the same as a half an hour, and we just said that half of 70 is 35 miles. What if Sean's family drives for T hours? Their unit rate was 70, so if we multiply the number of hours by 70, that would tell us how many miles they go. This is an expression. To graph this, 
we can go from 0, 0, 170. In two hours, they go 140. 3 is 210. 4 would be 280. And they can drive for partial hours, like two and a half or two hours and 20 minutes. So we can actually draw a line connecting those points, like you see here. We also see the unit rate is represented in this graph. It goes over one in the hours and up 70 for the miles. Now we need to write an equation. The difference between an equation and an expression is an equal sign. We were using this format for writing equations for proportional relationships. Here I have my constant of proportionality and the value that was on the x-axis. Distance was on the y-axis. So our equation should say d equals 70t. Identify the constant of proportionality. That was 70. That was our unit rate. And explain what it means. This is how many miles they travel per hour means in one hour. So they travel 70 miles in one hour. A hose completely fills a 15 gallon container with water in one and a half minutes. What is the unit rate and what does it mean in this situation? When we have time, typically to find a unit rate, we're gonna divide the first quantity by the time or whatever that other quantity is by the time. 15 divided by 1.5. I notice those have the same numbers in them. The only difference is where the decimal is, which means it's gonna be a multiple or a power of 10, like 10, 100, a tenth. 15 divided by 1.5 is 10, and that means 10 gallons of water blow through the hose each minute or in one minute. Write an equation to represent this situation. Define your variables. Usually we use y equals kx. Here we might use different letters but we know the k value is 10, so we're gonna start there. I need to figure out what letter or variable I'm gonna use for y and x. I have gallons and I have minutes. I'm gonna use g for gallons and m for minutes. Let's say, for example, I fill the water or the container for two minutes. Would it make sense to multiply by two or multiply something else and for our answer to end up as two? We want to multiply that unit rate by two. So this is going to be m. And if I did two times 10, that would tell me I get 20 gallons. So G equals 10 M. If you wanna use Y and X, that's okay. Just make sure that you define your variables so that this is Y and this is X.
How long does it take for the same hose to fill a 10, 20 or 2,000 gallon pool? We had G equals 10 M. This is gallons. So I'm going to replace the letter G with 2,000. Right now what's happening is I have 2,000 equals 10 times M. But I want to solve it for how long? I want to know how many minutes it takes. So to undo what's happening with the M, I'm going to divide by 10 because that will be eliminated. Those divide out. I have to keep my equation balanced, so I need to divide the left side by 10 as well. Which leaves me with 200 and M, which means it takes 200 minutes to fill a 2,000 gallon pool. 3 times 60 is 180, so this is just over 3 hours. You count 20 heartbeats in 15 seconds. Remember I told you, typically we divide by the time. What is the unit rate and what does it mean in this situation? 20 divided by 15. You can use some scratch room to solve that. 15 fits into 20 once. Bring down, you get 5 left over. Should have a decimal there. 15 fits into 50 three times. Bring down another zero. Oh, that's going to be another three. If we have 1.3333 repeating, this piece, this decimal should look familiar to you. That is a third. So we have one and one third as our unit rate. And that is the number of heartbeats. So one and one third heartbeats per second. Now we need to write an equation. First, let's define our variables. We're going to use H for heartbeats. And I don't like to use S, even though it's seconds, because S kind of looks like a five. So I'm going to use T for the time in seconds. It's not wrong if you use S, it's just harder to see that it's an S instead of a five. So the time gets multiplied by one and a third to tell us the heartbeats. At this rate, how many times does your heart beat in a minute? A minute is how many seconds? So we have heartbeats is one and a third times the time, and our time should be replaced with 60 seconds. Well, one times 60 is 60 and a third of 60 if I split 60 into three parts that's 20 so 1 and a third times 60 is 60 plus 20 which is 80 which is 80 heartbeats in one minute You pay $1.80 for 12 pencils. In money scenarios, we typically divide the cost per something else. So we're going to do 180 divided by the pencils. Oh, 
12 doesn't fit into 1, so we're putting a 0 there. And make sure your decimal is lined up. 12 fits into 18 one time. 12, or 18 minus 12 is 6. Bring down that 0. And 12 fits into 60 exactly five times. So that is 0 0.15. What does that mean in this situation? It means 15 cents per pencil. Write an equation. Define the variables. I might use D for dollars or M for money and P for the pencils. If it's 15 cents per pencil, then we should have 15 times P, and that will tell us how many dollars we will spend. Twelve is in the dollars position. Remember, what's happening here is these are being multiplied together. We want to know how many pencils, so we're trying to solve it for P. In order to isolate P, we need to undo multiplication by dividing. That leaves us with P. 12 divided by 0.15. There's a trick that we can use when dividing by decimals. We move the decimal two spots. Maybe. The pen doesn't want to write. How about my finger? Okay, two spots. Okay, maybe not. Then it would turn into 15, and if we move that two spots, that would be 1,200. Fifteen fits into 128 times. Fifteen times eight. Eight times five is 40. Eight times one is eight, plus four more is 120. Then we subtract, we get zero, but we still have another zero here, so we need to finish it up. That means we can buy 80 pencils with Okay, and that's it. Make sure your warm-up's finished and your workbook is filled in.